So, hello everyone. Uh, we are going to speak here now in about podcasting in Jula and specifically how I do it. Okay, I'm Carlos Camara. I do web consulting. I am a Jula developer at J Events and also Easy Layouts. And I am a proud Jula and Jula lover. I have uh, several uh, personal projects, and two of them are podcasts. Okay, Mastermind Jula, which is a podcast in which we speak and promote uh, Jula or try to promote Jula. We and that's basically what we are going to see here. What are my motivations and my goals uh, behind that podcast? Another podcast about PrestaShop, which is another platform I work with, and. I also have a couple of personal projects which are related to the podcast, so I mentioned them here. One is uh, Manuel's Joomla, which is a Joomla training site. It was, at some point, I would like it to be a membership training site. Right now, it's just blog articles. And also the extensions where I uh, publish my extensions, my Joomla extensions, or my, my uh, PrestaShop models, okay? Basically, that's uh, what you need to know for understanding most of the background of the podcast, I think. So, first of all, I guess you probably know what's a pod what a podcast is, okay? But just give me, let me uh, give some definition. A podcast is just an audio that you can download on demand, okay? At the beginning, uh, what defined a podcast was the XML feed, okay? an XML feed, like the blogs, where you uh, published all your last episodes and people can download them with the podcatcher, which is the application to, to manage your podcast, iTunes or whatever. But now that's kind of not uh, very common because there has appeared several platforms like Spreaker or Evox or even Spotify, which they simply offer the content to the user or the listener in their apps. So listeners do not need to know anything about your feed or, or something like that. Okay. So uh, another common thing in a podcast is it's right now like very amateur or there is not a, an entry barrier. So you can do a podcast. So when anyone can do a podcast, it's just recording the the audio and having an idea of what you want to, to achieve, okay? So, why podcasting? I started listening to podcasts in 2004, I think. So, uh, I really love them because at the beginning, they, I only downloaded a radio programs. I'm a really radio lover and I downloaded radio programs and the programs I could not uh, listen to at the at 4 a.m. in the morning or, or something like that. So I downloaded them with the podcatcher. They usually offer the, the feed and or even people fans for of these programs just created the feed and everything. So it was it was an amazing community work. And I started with that. After that, I discovered there were lots and hundreds of people doing content in podcasts and about all the topics you can imagine. Podcasting is usually about technology, but right now there are lots of podcasts about health, right? right. <laughs> and there are uh, podcasts about <laughs> history are very popular in Spain. I know uh, there is a podcast about anything you may imagine. The one of the weirdest one I found was about archaeology and was uh, it started a couple of weeks ago, so it's content you will not find in mainstream radio, in mainstream television, but you find them in a podcast. And it's great because it's not only you, jump, you can find that content which you want to hear, it's also that you decide what you want to hear. You do not need to wait for someone in a radio channel to say, Oh, you need at 4 a.m. You need to listen to this at 5 a.m. This is the content you will listen. No, you just see the description of the program. If you like it, you download it. If not, you wait for next week. It's OK. OK. So 
that's from the point of view of the listener. But what about marketer? Okay. One of the reasons you may want to start a podcast is for doing marketing of your stuff. So what's the benefits of podcasting for marketing? Well, one of the things that I see pretty obvious, and it's pretty obvious when you start listening to podcasts, is that your, the content, the audio, goes directly into your brain. You do not listen podcasts. Some people do, but it's not that common. You do not listen podcasts uh, in your kitchen with the radio or with the, um, the speaker loud. You listen, you listen podcast with your iPod or with your headset. So the content goes directly into your brain. And another good um, advantage for uh, speakers is that listeners really value, uh, 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 val um, like what the podcaster is doing. They really think it's a, a good thing for them. So they are like very engaged to the podcaster. It's like this guy is helping me in other things. So when he promotes something, that is really good for me. So it's like they, they feel that trust with the podcaster. Also, it's much cheaper to uh, produce a high quality audio than a high quality video. For a high quality video, you need a good scenario, you need a good camera, you need a good microphone because you need to take into account the audio and uh, you need to be very careful of your gestures and that stuff. In an audio, it's just recording your voice and you only need to take into account that you need a good microphone and a more or less quiet environment. We'll speak about that in a bit later. So, that makes uh, podcasting like a better alternative to creating a YouTube video, okay? Also, you can have your podcast and upload it to YouTube. You just add an image and people, there are lots of people listening to podcasts in YouTube and it's a great way also to make people discover your content. Also, it's a multi-platform medium. It's not that common when you have a YouTube channel, for instance, that you uh, create the video and then you write down notes about the video and you post the links and all the stuff. But in podcasting, when you create an audio and you have a podcast, you usually uh, add show notes to the XML, which contains links. So people can easily click on them while listening to your program. Or it's also very common that you create an article, in Julia, for instance, and describe what happened in the program or your feelings or that stuff and you also provide the links. So it's not only hype, it's not only that you have uh, audio which goes directly into your listener brain, it's also that you are offering several other uh, medium for your content to, to reach other people, okay, to be discovered. So I think I, you are sold. You want to do your podcast, so what do you need? Well, from my experience, when I started to research how to do the podcast, I had uh, absolutely almost none uh, audio editing uh, background. So I had no idea. I listened to a lot of podcasters and saw how, how they were doing, I read their, their specifications and that stuff. What they notice is there are some of them which are really audio freaks and have like 300 microphones, 300 euros microphones, and uh, like really uh, uh, completely isolated studios and that stuff. But there were others which were uh, recording their, their, podca their podcast with their uh, iPhone's uh, cable set. So uh, hardware is not important. And also, software is not that important because uh, most of uh, podcasts right now are being edited with Audacity, for instance, which is a free software and it's being it's multi-platform. You have it in Windows, Linux, and, and Mac. So Audacity is, is, is awesome. You don't need to buy a Hindenburg Pro or any other uh, 
uh, podcast program of audio editing too. So we will see some of them later. So hardware and software are not important. But what is really important is about your project. Okay? Podcasting is not I'm going to speak and I tell whatever I want. You need to offer as a, a quite a structure for your programs. Okay? So you need to have like a plan. And podcasting is not only about delivering content. It's not like writing a blog post. When you write a blog post, when you write a blog, you are just creating content. You more or less want Google to like you and yeah, it's, it's fine. But when you have a podcast, like it or not, you are creating a community. Because of that, I think it's because you go directly into the listener brain that there is a, like a different relationship between the podcaster and the listener than between the blogger and the reader. It's completely different. It's like they, they feel like you are his friend, you are with them. It's, it's, it's different. <laughs> I mean, I can tell from the point of view of the listener and from the point of view of the creator of the podcaster because I, I, have, uh, I spoke with some of my listeners because they, they, are, uh, they are friends and now uh, they, are, uh, they were not friends at the beginning and now they are friends. Um, part of it is because of the podcasting. So you really need a plan. Okay? It's, you need a vision for your podcast. What do you want? What do you, what, how I see my podcast uh, evolving? You need goals. Why do I want to do a podcast? Okay? So in that sense, it's kind of developing, kind of any project, right? Also, I recommend creating a program structure. I mean, I start with uh, saying hello to everyone, then I will go to the main topic, then I will read uh, feedback or comments. It's okay. And then you can evolve. You can like add things or remove things that you think don't work. But have an initial structure where you, a program, a, a script structure where you can just add things later. Okay? And it, it's important that it's more or less the same because people really expect to hear the same structure. It's like we feel very uh, afraid, very scared of uh, new things, of changes. So if you have like different structure from every episode, maybe some people are looking for the, into that and looking for that, but it's not that common, right? Also, as in <coughs> blogging, periodicity is really important. I mean, I publish my podcast daily. Perfect. You have to daily make your podcast and publish it. I do my podcast weekly. Perfect. Every week at that same day, same uh, time, you publish your podcast. I want to do it monthly. Perfect. Try, choose, pick up one day of the month and then that's the day you do it. Second Tuesday of the month. Perfect. You can do it. Okay, you don't want periodicity, it's fine, but uh, you probably will not engage that much with your audience. So at the beginning especially, it's good to have a good periodicity. I think they recommend one week because uh, doing a daily podcast is really time consuming and really hard. Doing one week allows you to be in your listener uh, uh, podcatcher every every week and it's like they get used to it but I do it uh, every two weeks because it's what I can do <laughs> I mean I have no more time so I mean you, you need also to balance between what you want to do and what you can do okay mm. and also yeah the, the, the questions later or no? yeah yeah sure okay um, so have you um, tried to to get people to, to do the audio cutting or to do the summary to free you up in time? I will speak about that. Yeah, why not? But uh, at the beginning, in one of the podcasts, we were two. I, we will see a bit later. We were Javier uh, Olivares from Debo and me. And he, he's completely audio freak. He loves audio editing. 
Okay. And he, he was doing all the audio editing. Okay. But even nice. though I manage, for instance, the other aspects of the podcast, and it's really time consuming because if you want to do a proper, if you have a proper project, you need to decide on the topic, do some research on the topic, even though you are an expert, you need to do some research to provide the most accurate information, or at least that's my way of doing it. And then you need to, after the podcast is uh, recorded, you need to write down the, the notes for the program. And this that's... Always a time where it's very hard for, for, for me. May I uh, just uh, ask a general question? Two of the listeners here uh, actually have a podcast and are working on a podcast. Okay. Or did work. <laughs> awesome. Three okay. podcasters. Oh, I thought it was only Alex. What's your podcast about? Uh, what's it about? Yeah, what's about? Okay, um, it's about a strength sport, motivation, oh. and way of living. Is it in Deutsch or? Yes, it's okay. in German. Okay. Right. But I got some. Uh, I got also some uh, English guests. Okay. But that is very expensive for me because I let the whole thing being translated into German. So because I'm not um, that arrogant to say, oh, you all have to speak yeah. English. Yeah. It's, Which it's is uh, financially stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. Interesting. And the Horn Man, what's your podcast about? It, it, I stopped it a year ago. It was about open source. Nice. People, basically. Okay, great, great. No, I, I want the, the feeds afterwards to add them to my podcast. I don't, I don't know that, that much German, so to... <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry, just go for... I, I got on the web page, I got an English section, and there are also all English podcasts. Perfect. I, I listen to Alex, although I do not understand most of the things they speak He's about. He's cursing all the time. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, yeah very, very bad. Yeah, yeah very yeah. full language. And no, I mean... <laughs> He's all the time like having cold showers and getting up early and now he wants to do vegetarian. It's crazy, yeah, my bad. It's fine. But, but speaking of language, if you, uh, if you think about to start a podcast, this is a very import uh, question if I like to do it in my own language or if I do it in English. Because in English you have a very, very large market. Yes. But everyone understands English around the globe. I do my podcast in German, though it's only Germany, Switzerland, and Austria as a uh, target. Uh, yeah, and Spain. And Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Gracias, señor. Gracias. Um, and uh, of course, you can, in your own language, you can talk easier about complex things like health or, or hormones or things I'm talking about. But the English market is a big one. Yeah, that, that's, that's true, definitely. That's something, it's not in my notes, but thank you very much. You, if you have like, several, you speak several languages, you need to decide which language you want to target. In my project, in Mastermind Yula, I have a, a specific goal, which I will uh, show you next slide. So, uh, I, I needed to do it in Spanish. I knew doing it in English will broad a lot my audience, but that was not the goal and that was not uh, what will make my podcast accomplish the vision I have for it. Okay, so I, I decided to do to do Spanish. Also, my English is not perfect, but I mean, that doesn't matter because it's podcast, right? It's, it's no, no matter, no, no one right now. There are very professional podcasting, but no one is going to send you a <laughs> A death note when you do not speak, do you do not do a very professional podcast, right? This is associated with amateur, even though there are very good professional podcasts. So it's it's fine. It's do whatever you want. I'm just saying what I think is good for for podcasting and for for everyone. So after periodicity, just choose a list of topics you want to talk just to have a list of, yeah, program one and episode one, I'm going to speak about this, episode two about that, I'm going to uh, bring this uh, interviewer. Interviews are, are lovely, I love them. So, yeah, I'm speaking now about me, <laughs> which is what I love most. Uh, 
last year, I mean, I, we, we decided to start the podcast in 2016 in Jula de Granada. And I had that idea in mind because in Spain, Jula is really in crisis. I mean, you find lots of people right now speaking about WordPress. And no one is speaking about Joomla. And I said, OK, why is that? Here in Spain, specifically. I know that is something that most of us are feeling in our parts of the world. But for instance, I see Jula de Germany or Jula de Netherlands is an awesome community. Jula de Spain, it's not that big yet, the, the community of people who are done. Although last, day, Jula, last year, Jula de Madrid was awesome, and this year is going to be even better. But even though I saw there was lots of room for improvement, and I noticed something. <coughs> When you look, this is iVox, right? It's a, a Spanish podcasting platform. Their vision is to be the YouTube of audios, but you probably don't know them in your country. <laughs> anyway, uh, when you look for podcasts in WordPress, you have top in the in, in orange, 95, oh, I think I have mouse. Yeah, here. Yeah. 95 programs. Wow. 95 people speaking about uh, WordPress. When you go to Joomla, you have six. From this is, it's just me. <laughs> and this is a testing. This is just a testing. This is Joomla Beat, which everyone I hope knows. And this is a Joomla course, but this Jula training, but this yeah, something. So there was nothing because before my podcast, there was no podcast speaking about Jula in Spanish. And I said, okay, that's the thing. WordPress has lots of people, lots of marketing people speaking about WordPress, about how good it is, how easy it is, and how you can do whatever you want with WordPress, which I will not deny, but it's the same for Jula. And if you look at the code, we are probably doing better code. So why should people only speak about WordPress? We needed a place where we could speak about it. And also we needed a place where we could rejoin as a Spanish community. So my goal, my vision was, okay, I'm going to create, my goal, sorry, was I need to create a podcast so that Spanish community get united and people start learning more about Joomla. And actually, the slogan for my podcast, I mean, the name is Mastermind Joomla, which is Joomla. <laughs> I tried market it, so I mean, I ask uh, permission, so it's not uh, wrong in that sense. And uh, the slogan is the podcast for you to build, to, to enhance your web, your web application. So the slogan says nothing about Joomla because this is for web developers or for web owners to increase their way of, I mean, to learn more about the web and to make the, the web to go to another level. So that's like a very hard vision, <laughs> but it was the, the idea. Also, as I mentioned at the beginning, I have two projects which are kind of uh, my personal idea of getting a membership revenue, like people pay me for just having the content there. <laughs> so uh, I wanted the podcast, I wanted to use the podcast and to test the podcast as a marketing tool. So uh, I, I'm not, because when you do something for the community, it's great, but at some point you burn out or you cannot do things. So I needed like a different, uh, goal, different uh, motivation for keep up with the hard work with the podcast. So that's another uh, of the reasons I'm doing the, the podcast. And also I said, okay, this is the year of podcasting. We are going to monetize everyone who has a podcast in 2018. is going to monetize. It's going to get money from the podcast. Are you getting some money from your podcast? No, but for yeah. live speaking about the podcast. Okay. A little bit, it's not, I'm not getting it. You're not getting it. Don't go and watch or something. 
Okay, so uh, that's the thing. Okay, right now uh, this is not yet the way where the, the time where you get money from your podcast. You are getting money from your podcast? No, nope, that's very good at spending a whole lot of money into the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, uh, when you do a modcast, podcast and want to monetize it, you um, have to be aware of that how there are several ways to do this. Um, my problem, for example, with my podcast, that I do not have a digital <laughs> project to be sold. So no ebook, no, no online courses or whatever. If I would have them, this would be a very good way to mention them in the podcast. By the way, when you're interested in that, maybe you check out that course or something like this. So this is the one way, or you build a very, very strong community and use, for example, Patreon stuff. I know some people who get money from that, also that it keeps up with running costs of the show, but they are very, very good, very funny, and I've been doing this for years. Yeah, uh, that's so awesome. practice makes perfect. Exactly. Th thank you very much for that. I I think that's exactly the case and the situation we are right now. When you are really good, have a yeah. I forgot something. Plain advertisement. So yeah. if, if 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 you get people who say, oh please, uh, uh, place my product in the show, and you get money from this, this may be also uh, another way to. Yeah. And just to, because I, I have had nothing about monetizing on this slides, but just to complete, there is another way which people in Spain is using is uh, affiliate. I know. Yeah. So they get an Amazon affiliate link and they speak about the gadgets, the buy or whatever. If, they, if you have a good community, they probably will link on the affiliate and will buy the things you got. So, yeah. Uh, and everything to say to, to, to affiliate things, uh, links. And be very careful how you place affiliate links or maybe you, you build your own infrastructure for affiliate links because once you wrote them in the show notes and so on and they are uploaded or hard loaded into the mp3 file, uh, you cannot change them. And something which I had where I had a very slim revenue stream, it was an affiliate program and I mean I also said oh this is an affiliate link if you want to support the, the show and you coincidentally want to buy a kettlebell please do that there, then we got a little bit, 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 bit back and can find it to show a little bit. Um, but they changed the whole affiliate link structure and they do not have it at the moment anymore. And so um, basically they got a whole lot of links, uh, but I cannot get any cash in return. So maybe you, you have a mind to have a third step in between for reposting affiliate links, so you could be actually be able to uh, change them. Yeah, what what people do in Spain or some of the podcasters I listen to is they have the URL of the podcast and then Amazon or affiliate or whatever. So uh, it's a redirection. When yeah. you access there, you go with their affiliate link, but that uh, way you do not have a link. Yeah, and you can still get even the you change the affiliate platform, right? Then you get all the uh, you, you can use the uh, link component from Gumroad. It works yeah, very exactly. good. Perfect. And then you just have to change it. But exactly. just remember to be always using the link component if you set your affiliate links. Exactly. <laughs> so maybe can maybe I? one sorry sorry maybe one more thing about the advertising. Um, you should think about that your advertising uh, should have the right direction with your podcast. When I'm talking about uh, a healthy diet and nutrition, I cannot make advertising for Red Bull or something like that. Even if they gave me some money, when I take the money and say Red Bull is a very healthy thing, that nobody believes the content of my podcast. Yeah. So yeah. it should be going on one direction. And maybe should be a product that you are really careful and testing and find good for yourself. Um, this could be a, a good thing for both for you, for the industry and for the, for the listeners too. Yeah. Uh, uh, just want to ask, for me, I, if I pick an interest in podcasting for countries like Nigeria, uh, what would be the minimum minutes for a podcast if you want to have them in episode, episode and you know, how do you think it will stimulate 
the community to come back to you. If you have a very lengthy podcast, they may not. No, uh, lengthy podcast for my experience as listener and as podcaster do not work. The only lengthy po podcast I, I listen to are either the one who speaks about history, because historian seems to speak a lot, more than me, <laughs> uh, and others about that which are uh, serials, like they do uh, dramatizations of books or whatever, they are actors doing their play, playing a role. But lengthy podcast, podcasts uh, do not work. For me, the perfect uh, length, it's, well, it depends also in your audience and your, uh, and your, your, your target audience. So for me, uh, the perfect podcast for Mastermind or what I have seen that works, it's around 40, 45 minutes. When I extend that length, people complain and they tell me, it's okay, but I couldn't do that. I couldn't finish it because I was like that and then it's like hard to follow. I have to split. But for instance, uh, some people who do uh, daily podcasts in Spain, what they do is, this is the, the time. Uh, we are, you are going to listen to this when you are walking your dog or when you are going to work. So you have 20 minutes and they create podcasts of 20 minutes because they want people to specifically listen to them in that specific area. Also, when you have uh, advanced listeners like me, <laughs> have the, in the podcatcher, have a, you usually have options about uh, speed of reproduction. So you can listen a podcast at two, uh, two times faster than the speaker. You, you listen like a smooth voice. <laughs> But it works when you have lots of podcasts and you want to listen on all of the content. For instance, when I'm uh, listening to a, a non-Spanish uh, podcast, I use regular speed, even slower if it's German, just trying to catch up. When I listen to a Spanish podcast <laughs> and it's not something I need uh, lots of uh, mental activity, I do it like 1.8 or something so, so it's like it depends on that but the length of the podcast depends on your target audience you can have podcasts from five minutes till four hours i think there was one in spain who added an episode of eight hours wow. yeah history podcast and also the thing you have to take into account is <laughs> an eight hours audio weights much more in megabytes than a uh, 10 minutes audio. So if you uh, if you have a user that downloads all the podcasts and then has to download 300 megabytes of audio because you create a really lengthy podcast, then that might be a problem for him and may uh, avoid him to download it. So it depends on, on that stuff, okay? So another thing, oh, sorry. Another thing you have to check is uh, the tone. I mean, are you doing a formal podcast? Are you going too serious? Are you doing more casual? Are you going like crazy and this is just for fun? Whatever. Uh, in Mastermind Yula, what we did was I wanted a casual uh, podcast and I started with Javier. We were like doing uh, and it was not an interview, but it was like, like this session. We did mastermind. One spoke about what he does in this specific topic, and the other replied, oh, I do also do that. Or, no, what I do is this. And also I discovered the other day this other tool, which is awesome for this. And then you can uh, keep growing from, from that. So that's, that's more or less the, the tone you, you, you want for the podcast is something that you need also to, to establish, okay? I started with Javier, but Javier at some point got like a overflow of work. <laughs> he couldn't uh, attend the, the meetings we had for the podcast. He couldn't do the audio editing and that stuff. So I had to uh, record my episodes alone. I discovered that it was really boring. <laughs> so what I did since the beginning of this year, I am not recording alone. 
every episode I have a guest. I don't care if it is a jubla rock star, if it is a beginner. I just want people to speak about their jewel experience, about how they do things, and also learn from them and make them learn from what uh, I say or what other comments in the podcast. So that's also in the in the tone of that. And people is my listeners are much happier with that than when I just spoke alone. Okay, and it's easier to create the content because you you establish a conversation and it's usually it's better. I do it every two weeks and my program structure has changed a bit. I started with very few things. I started with just uh, hello this is Mastermind Joomla. I am Carlos Camara from Manuales Joomla which is your place to learn Joomla. Then oh, hi and with me is Javier from Devop which is your best uh, application for doing uh, staging and dev operations and DevOps. Uh, and then, hi Javier, today we are going to speak about this and then we had some feedback. It was very simple. Now the program has completely evolved and now we have. I do this kind of, this is what I have done these two weeks. I went to a high school and I spoke to students about Joomla and I developed this uh, PDF uh, plugin for J events and we did this and we did that. Uh, that's kind of the self-promotion I do for the podcast, the marketing part. And then I t speak about Jula news of the past two weeks. Then I mention the vulnerability list extensions, the new uh, records on the list. And then I, we spoke, uh, I, I spoke with my guest about the, I speak with my guest to the, about the topic, okay? Finally, I have one thing, which is the episode project, which is every episode I have to do something which allows me to grow or the community to grow or Joomla to grow. For instance, I have uh, the, the project I have to do, which I have not done this episode yet, <laughs> is to fix a bug uh, that there is in Joomla regarding accessibility. That's my project for this episode. So when I do it, I will tell and I will assign another task for the next episode. I usually ask my guests if they want to do something. And sometimes, for instance, Aníbal and Andrea from Mexley and Juncap uh, started to work on an application, a mobile application for the podcast. Just for fun. Um, yeah, let's, let's do it. So it grows the co podcast community. It's fine. Uh, it grows you because you fix bugs. It's fine. Uh, you test this extension and you show it to the people. It's fine. It allows everyone to, to grow. After the pre episode project, I tell some feedback and I do a little CTA call to action, which is leave me a review, leave me a comment, uh, click on like. Yeah. Um, have you found out if some things were better in engaging the community to be getting feedback, uh, evaluation or something? and some things which maybe did not work that good. So because sometimes it's, it's, it's hard for people to, to get actually their feedbacks. Uh, uh, a lot of times I was thinking I would just fresh in my podcast and then um, at some, okay, strength communities, uh, people are going like, oh, I really like a podcast. And I said, okay, this is very nice, uh, but why, why didn't you just click on five stars or something? Yeah, people yeah, so it's very hard to, to, to get them even though they like you. Yeah. The yeah, people it's really hard to for them to, to leave a comment or to do things. But I have discovered that one of the problems is that when you are listening to a podcast, you are not usually in front of your computer. Oh yeah. really? Oh mm -hmm. my god. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's you are not in front of your computer. So uh So, uh, <laughs> as you are not there, you, you, you need to remember afterwards that you have to leave a comment. So, probably one thing you could do to get more comments and more reviews is uh, you uh, offer them a way to do it on mobile. Like, it, for instance, the show notes with a proper link to comment here, it's usually a good idea. Or having them to, uh, oh, leave me a review at Twitter, just click 
script right now in your Twitter app, like compel them to, to do it right now. Mm. Usually it work, but it's, it's true that it's not common for them. And only when you have uh, people that feel really engaged to you, they, 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 want, they, are, they want to, to leave the comment. But most of the feedback I get is, I mean, I, ha I get lots of comments in Mastermind Yula, I'm really lucky. But most of the feedback is in person, like, or when you call some of them or you have to interact with some of the people, they tell you, hey, I love the new vulnerability list section because it, I mean, I do not remember every, every extension you mentioned, but if you mention extension I use, I check. So it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Okay. So it's, it's like that. So you can record in mobility or you can record in a studio, okay? When you are recording in mobility, you just go with your phone and there are microphones for your phone or you can use your headset and you try to not go to very uh, noisy roads. You can record in a studio. For that, you just need a computer and a more or less quiet environment. Yeah, exactly, that's sure, that, that's awesome, <laughs> awesome microphone. Uh, today, for instance, at the on conference, I'm going to, I, I'm not going to, later we can check, okay, because he's like showing the, the, <laughs> the tag. So uh, later I'm going to record the podcast for first time out of my studio. And we are going to do in the unconference three, probably. We are going to record the podcast with the Spanish community. Everyone is invited if you know some Spanish. The podcast is in Spain. If you do not know some Spanish, you can come and say, hey, I love Mastermind Yula and I would love that. Okay? <laughs> okay, I, for my podcast, I use a, a USB microphone, which is the Behringer C1U, which is not very good, but it's the one I bought. It's not very good because the amplitude is not that good. You need to uh, increase a lot the volume in the software, and it's not that good. But as I tell, I tell anything works. If you do not have a very isolated environment, I recommend a dynamic microphone. They are not that good uh, getting your voice. The, it's not, they do not get all the frequencies, but they are better for isolating noise. If you have a more or less isolated environment, uh, a capacitor microphone is better because your voice will be awesome. But it's like a very personal thing. You just test a microphone. If you like how your voice sounds, it's perfect. Right now, uh, no, I mean, sometimes you don't like how they sound in, this, in the microphone. There are some tricks for enhancing the audio, and one of it is using the auphonics.com uh, uh, oh, uh, audio phonics. Yeah, sorry. It's auphonics. Auphonics. It's a great service. Yeah. Yeah, and they they improve automatically your your audio, and for one hour per month, I think it's free. Two. So two hours, perfect. So my my so your podcast might be less than two hours, <laughs> and then you can use it for free, and it's perfect. So, for editing the audio, you can use Audacity, which is awesome free software. You can use GarageBand. You have, can use GoPro and use Hindenburg Pro. There are awesome solutions which uh, you, can, you can use to enhance and to uh, clip the noises that sometimes get. You, the microphone falls down or you get a good pause or whatever, okay? For marketing your podcast, I really recommend uploading to Apple Podcasts and whatever podcast network you have, especially if it's in, in your country and you have a specific uh, language, just use them, okay? So I have Apple Podcasts and I have iBox, which are in Spain. Uh, but you can use Spreaker, you can use LipSync, you can use lots of these uh, things. And for getting statistics, I use Blueberry, which is free at the beginning and if you do not need very exhaustive statistics, it's okay. I want to speak about accessibility because for podcasting you say, oh, well, it's recorded, it's okay. So uh, blind people could uh, use it, could, could hear it. But it's not about that because there is people who can not hear. So what happened with them? I know it's really hard, but if you could offer a transcript of your podcast for them, it would be awesome. There are services who you upload the audio and they provide a transcript. Even you can do that with Google Docs. Just put the microphone and say, Google Doc, uh, I'm dictating. 
and then it will transcript your audio. You can even do it in YouTube. If you upload the audio in a video to YouTube, it will show the subtitles. That's also a nice thing if you want to, to use it. And then you can even translate, which will allow you a more bigger audience, okay? Also for SEO, probably a transcript is, is good. So for podcasting in Joomla, what they use is Michael Bapker Podcast Manager, which is a really great tool for podcasting. It's just you upload the audio and it creates the feed and everything. Uh, unfortunately, Michael stopped it, uh, maintain support, giving support. So I forked the project and I have my fork version and you can check it, it's in my GitHub. And yeah, it's, it's an awesome tool, so I'm going to keep uh, improving it and working on it. So if anyone is welcome to, to contribute and, and other stuff. Support several database types. Uh, it works from Eula 2.5 to Eula 3.7. With my fourth version, it works till 3.8. And also, I added a couple of extra new tags that I do support and other stuff. And then for creating the website, I use Joomla, obviously, and I use Easy Layout because it allowed me to create a specific structure for my show notes. Like I usually make a sentence at the beginning of my podcast, my podcast with the general sense of the of the of the episode, like saying I don't know, uh, a backup you do not uh, check is a is not a backup. Or something like that. When I am speaking about backups, I tell the Schrodinger backups uh, to uh, sentence quote. So I have them like in a separate field, in a custom field, and then I use these layouts to paste it together. And it also has a float view, which is really good to keep showing in lazy loading the new episode. So it's it's an awesome tool. I use it. Also, I work there. So <laughs> and yeah and. Some people in the community, for instance, one of the good examples of community, Sergio Iglesias, it's a good uh, Spanish uh, member. He's in Duke, Madrid, and he developed a plugin, a custom field for iBox. So I can embed iBox uh, uh, player in my show notes, which it's awesome. So I have the custom field, I have easy layouts, I, I put it together. And it's a good community about I'll go to the example about community helping you. It was at the very beginning of the podcast he offered that custom field. So it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I cannot speak about podcasting in a Yule event without mentioning Pete. Yule Beat was for me one of the greatest podcasts about Yule ever. And I really need someone to do a great Yule podcast in English. So I really hope you get some motivation from this event and you start your Yula podcast. Um, yeah, Tim Plummer tried to follow him, but he didn't get the periodicity. So please do a Yula podcast in English. We need it. Okay. <laughs> so I will be more than happy that you do it. And yeah, I need it. You are not showing the orange one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much. I will try to post the slides and we can speak about